you all for being here today. I wanted to share that over the summer, I respectively informed the Board of Education that I'll be seeking a new superintendent position for the 2020-21 school year. My wife, Janet, and I were excited to welcome our first grandchild in 2019, and it is our desire to move closer to his family while seeking new challenges and opportunities to further what I consider a successful career. This was a difficult decision as Bloomington Normal is such a wonderful community. But Janet and I are excited to have an opportunity to be able to spend more time with our daughters, son-in-law, and our grandson in the very near future. I'm extremely proud of what we have accomplished during my tenure at Unit 5. We've developed and impl implemented career pathways, enabling students to graduate from high school with associate's degrees in high demand career fields, supporting local businesses and organizations. Over $500,000 tuition-free credits provided to high school students for the 2018-19 school year. In support of this process, unique instructional opportunities were implemented such as student internships, blended learning, virtual learning, and project-based learning, promoting student experiential learning. Implemented career counselors in each high school to coordinate college and career readiness with community businesses and organization providing real world experiences. Also, our graduation rates increased from 86.1% in 2014 to around 92% in 2017 and it's staying in that area, that range. A district-wide focus on college and career readiness, standards-based grading aligned to Illinois learning standards, literacy and social-emotional learning, including mental health counselors jointly funded with local community mental health organizations. The various district initiatives guide professional development and funding of pilot programs with data analysis generated to drive expansion. Also, I will never forget the days where we were involved with negotiations and a negotiation team to bring Rivian Automotive and Brandt Industries to McLean County. Through these negotiations, business partnerships developed, supporting our college and career opportunities for students while meeting future employment needs of local businesses. We also changed what I'll say from a district-driven school improvement process to a building-level school improvement process by empowering school principals and teachers to identify root causes and then develop strategies to improve academic performance of students and enhance building culture unique to their respective schools. It is important to know that I'm not going anywhere now. We have a lot of wonderful work to do in Unit 5. I'll continue in this position through June 30th of 2020. By making this decision early, the Unified Board of Education will have sufficient time to seek my replacement as of July 2020. I look forward to an outstanding school year as it continues to be an honor and a privilege to serve the Unit 5 community. Thank you. The Unit 5 Board of Education thanks Dr. Daniel for his leadership, his effort to empower his staff members, and his ability to build important relationships with community and business leaders. The Board will begin the search for a new superintendent immediately and is working with School Exec Connect, a firm that specializes in finding educational leaders. The search firm will make a presentation at our September 11th Board meeting and the current plans are tentatively to approve an agreement with that company at our September 25th board meeting. We appreciate Dr. Daniel's dedication and service to the students and families of Unit 5. The Unit 5 School Board wishes Dr. Daniel and his family the very best as he continues his long and successful career. We'll now take questions. Where do you plan to go? Well, that's still undecided, so there are quite a few opportunities. I do want to stay in the state of Illinois. And uh, we do have some connection to the Chicago land area. So the circumstances seem, um, I guess, perhaps a little bit unusual. Um, on what terms are, are you leaving? His contract expires at the end of the 2020 school year. And it was just the opportune time for this decision to be made. Dr. Yeah. Daniel, what are your main goals for then this kind of final year, you know, victory yes. lap? What are your yeah. kind of hopes for this year? That's a nice way to say it. I will say that there are 
we just finished our evaluation process and we are definitely always looking how do we become financially independent or creating a structure such that we don't have our um, structural deficit. We're very proud that during the past five years we've always had a balanced budget, meaning that what was planned we held to that budget. But we are, we do have a structural deficit which needs to be, we need to find ways to eliminate. We also talked a little bit about what we've, what we've been doing in the social emotional learning aspect. Uh, that will continue. And the third thing in regards to academics, we know there are inequities and achievement gaps for various groups of our students, and that will be primary focus of our building leaders and district leaders as we look at that data. Also looking at not just the student data, but the instructional practice data and information, figuring out root causes or at least hypothesizing of the root causes and using best practices to change that, to move that needle. So those are the three primary areas. Mr. Richards, how does this change or does this change the calculus for um, a referendum in the near future? Uh, and uh, well, I guess, why don't we start with that first? So we as a district still need to continue to assess our expenses and our revenue sources and as Dr. Daniel alluded to, we need to look at how we can continue to provide the best education possible for our students with the resources we have available. And we need to assess where we are going forward with our revenue streams. Do you look to accelerate that though as far as, uh, as, far as a possible referendum? It's too early to make a decision on that. We can need to continue to make assessments. What about uh, redistricting? Uh, classrooms are, are overcrowded in a number of places, especially in normal community. Is, is that something that you're going to look to to move along at a, at a higher pace? At this point, we're not looking at any type of redistricting, no. Okay. Uh, what are you going to be looking for in Dr. Daniel's successor? I don't really have an answer for that. The way the search process is actually going to work, though, is we're going to gather through the search firm that we're engaging, a we're going to work with the various levels of the school district employee staff, so administrators, building principals, teachers, support staff. We're also gonna be working with community leaders, parents, and other stakeholders within the district to establish what is essentially a profile for the next superintendent. And then the search firm will take that profile, compare it against people they have a list of applicants that they have developed over the years of people who might be looking for superintendent positions and based on how well they match that profile we would then do various levels of interviews to de then determine the next superintendent. Are you willing to name the search firm that you'll be working with and how much the district will pay to have the service done? The search firm is School Exec Connect and I don't have the, num the exact number. What approximation would be? Uh, it, it's under $30,000. Has Unified worked with that firm before? To my knowledge, they have been the firm we worked with for the past two superintendent searches, yes. Sticking on the same topic of the search process, do you foresee some sort of open house event um, you know, to announce, I guess, the, the, the last two finalists? We haven't really discussed that. That's gonna be part of our presentation, the presentation at the meeting on Wednesday. The School Exec Connect will walk through an overall concept of here's how it flows. We can't really say what specific events at this time we would have during that search process. How do you feel uh, administration has uh, handled the issue with uh, school buses with first students since it outsourced? There have been reports of delays that have been ongoing. How, how has that been addressed uh, to, your, to your level of satisfaction? And uh, do, you, do you expect that uh, that, that can be remedied. We're really hoping to keep this focused on Dr. Daniel's decision to seek employment outside of our district, so I'm not gonna answer that question. I well, I demand if that would be a priority for, for a successor for a new, uh, new superintendent. Transportation is one of those things we can't operate a district without, so we would need to look at improving our solution.
What is your proudest achievement of your time here? If you, I know it's obviously hard to pick just one, but if you had to. I, I thought about that question, and uh, it's hard to give just one answer, but I'll say what we've done in the area of college and career readiness in the high school arena, um, we're moving in a direction that I think's impacted our entire community. Uh, our involvement with the chamber and compact and so forth and in other districts around us um, and truly creating more of a fluid transition from the 11th grade and 12th grade uh, into their, their post-secondary lives. I think that's been um, not as rapid as I'd like to have been, but I think progress made there and I think it's going to be sustainable. So that's a, that would be probably the, the main thing. Is there an unfinished business category that you've got, like, really wish you've gotten that done before you take off? Well, I, I think what we've done in the area of social emotional learning, we've only begun the pilot program last year. It's where that's now going to go and how do we continue to partner with our health organizations um, to support us. We're, we're moving that direction, but I think it still has uh, a wide path yet to to, to plow, so. Dr. Gannon, did you say, and uh, clarify your daughters and son-in-law and grandson, did you, are they in the Chicagoland area? I have a couple of daughters in the Chicagoland area, and they'll be, um, that is one of the reasons we're interested. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, as well, we have some other, I have four daughters, and a couple others that would be in that area as well. So, again, depending upon where the opportunities fall, and. I'm also interested in seeing what happens in Unit 5, and again, I think our respect for each other and respect for our school district and our families and our students and our greater community, I think uh, it was only right to make an announcement so this business can take place. Um, otherwise, it waits until the very end and, and you have all that. So, But I'll also will say this, having been in a district like Unit 5, the experience provided, the um, not, not just the successes, but also you learn from your challenges. And I think we've had numerous challenges and we've uh, tried to meet those head on and we've done so very, very much uh, in regards to an honest way, a transparent way. And I think that's the way we do business. And I'm very pleased and proud to say I've been part of the Unified. What the message do you have for, for your teachers uh, who you will be uh, leaving behind after this year? So, you know, that is, as I look at our teachers and a vast amount of, uh, vast amount of professional development and expertise that they possess, that they continue to move forward and the, the, our motto is continuous improvement. And I'll say that I would place our teachers side by side to any teacher that I've uh, I've met or been part of, whether it's been in Indiana, Michigan, or Illinois. And uh, I think they're extremely professional, they're very hardworking, and bottom line is they truly care about their kids. And, uh, you know, we, we really worked hard trying to reduce class sizes, and I think we've done an excellent job in that through, uh, through the elementary years, but we still have some pockets in our secondary world where we could do some better work. Um, but again, that boils down to budget and what we have available. Uh, Dr. Daniel, what's your age and how big a factor was that in this? <laughs> I'm a very young person in heart, but uh, anyway, I'm about 58, I'm 58 years of age, but I, uh, I'm tier two, so that's important to know that. Tier two means I will work until age 67 in the state of Illinois, which is fine because my father-in-law worked till he was 89 and uh, had a, a psychiatric practice until he was 89. So I guess as part of uh, our background, my father also worked in, in his field, he was a minister, worked in that field until his, his uh, early 80s. So I'm very, uh, I love what I do. I love the energy that uh, is part of our business. Um, and I'm looking forward and take, taking what I've learned here at Unit 5, uh, the expertise, the professional development, the relationships, and moving that to uh, perhaps in the uh, uh, up north a bit. Looking at your time in education, going back to when you first started, how has the job of an administrator 
become more challenging over that time because of budget situations, school safety, socio-emotional learning, all of those different dimensions. Again, I, it's as if our field never ceases to expand. And the responsibilities and the expectations of services provided to our students, I think it's going to become more evident as you look at the ESSA results and what's happening from the ESSA, which is every student succeeds at from the federal level. You're now going to be able to see what we do at each building level from a budgetary standpoint and the services provided. But also, what is the return on that investment? The principals today and administrators are day, today are tied to results. And that is very different than uh, even when I first began um, as an administrator. The idea was you took care of the operations and the management, not the instructional practice and how are you becoming an academic leader as well. So I think that's very different and that evolution continues. I'm also proud that we were part of the whole um, process with um, having internships, principal internships um, through ISU. That created succession planning and it also created a pipeline for highly trained principals moving into those new positions, primarily assistant principalships, but sometimes principalships, and they hit the ground running. It wasn't, well, where do, what do I do next? It was, this is what we do, this is best practice, and let's get to that business. So um, there's the difference from, what, from my earlier years versus where we are today. Do you plan to help them, say, during, if they're ready to come in while you're still here? I'm willing to help in any way the board would like for me to help. Will be a circumstance where once Dr. Daniel is last day comes, you hire an interim superintendent the same way I did with, with bringing Alan Chapman in last time? So with close to a year, we've got 10 months, our goal is to hire a permanent superintendent going into the 2020-2021 school year. So our ho hope and goal is to avoid having to name an interim, interim superintendent. Uh, Dr. Daniel, what's your salary? Uh, right now I'm 203,000. And was that a factor here? Uh, not really. Um, and then we've just had a uh, evaluation meeting, so it might increase a bit more. There will be an item on our board meeting agenda. Uh, he'll be given a 1% increase for this coming school year. I don't know if it says it anywhere on here, but how many years, I know it just says tenure, but how many years have you been the Unified Superintendent? This is my going to my sixth year. Do you have a regret? Not really. Uh, this was a very positive experience, uh, constructive I think. It was good for my family, it's been good for my relationship with board members. Uh, um, not really. I've had uh, a very positive experience and learned a great amount. So I take that experience, I think I could benefit another district in, in a rather significant manner. 